Welcome to Foodaloo, where we know what we do. In this video, we're going back a thousand years when the world was a vastly different place. The landscape, cultures, and tools that shaped human civilization had not yet reached the modern era's complexity, meaning the food we consumed a millennium ago provides a fascinating glimpse into the everyday lives, survival strategies, and cultural practices of our ancestors. Let's take a journey through the various regions of the world to explore what we were eating around the year 1024 AD. First, we'll start with Europe. The diet 1,000 years ago was heavily influenced by the feudal system, where most people were peasants working the land owned by nobility. The majority of the population relied on what they could grow or trade locally. Grains such as barley, rye, oats, and wheat formed the staple of their diet. Bread often coarse and dark due to the unrefined flour, was the cornerstone of most meals. Porridge made from these grains was also common, especially among the poorer classes. Vegetables like cabbages, leeks, onions, and beans were common, with root vegetables such as turnips and carrots also making appearances. However, the variety was limited, and many vegetables we consider staples today, such as potatoes and tomatoes, had not yet been introduced from the Americas. Meat was a luxury for most, and when it was consumed, it was often preserved through salting, smoking, or drying. The wealthy enjoyed more frequent access to fresh meats, including beef, pork, and game like deer, boar, and rabbits. Fish was an important source of protein, especially on religious fasting days when the consumption of meat was forbidden. Times sure were different back then. Dairy products, such as cheese and butter, were widely consumed, but their availability and quality depended heavily on the season and the wealth of the household. Honey was the primary sweetener, as sugar was a rare and expensive commodity. For the wealthy, feasts were grand affairs with a variety of meats, fish, and exotic spices imported from the East, such as pepper, cinnamon, and cloves. These feasts were not just about nourishment, but also served as displays of power and wealth. Moving over to the Middle East, we find that it was situated at the crossroads of trade routes connecting Asia, Africa, and Europe, leading to rich and diverse culinary traditions. By 1024 AD, the Islamic Golden Age had brought advancements in agriculture, cuisine, and food preservation, so the diet was more varied compared to Europe, also thanks to the region's advanced irrigation systems and trade networks. Wheat was the staple grain used to make flatbreads, which were a common addition to meals. Rice from Asia was also becoming more common, particularly in Persia, now known as modern-day Iran. And legumes, such as lentils, chickpeas, or fava beans, were primary protein sources for the masses. Fruits and vegetables were abundant, with figs, dates, and grapes being particularly popular. The use of herbs and spices like saffron, cumin, coriander, and mint was widespread, adding flavor and aroma to dishes. Meat consumption varied depending on social status and religious practices. Lamb and goat were common, with beef and chicken also present in wealthier households. The region's location being near the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean meant that fish was readily available, both fresh and preserved, so fish was never out of the question even back then. Lastly, olive oil was the primary cooking fat, and dairy products like yogurt and cheese were staples in the diet. Sweet dishes often featured honey, nuts, and dried fruits, with early forms of pastries and confections being enjoyed by those who could afford them. Next, we'll peek over to Asia. To see the diet 1,000 years ago was as varied as the continent itself. In China, the Song Dynasty, reigning from 960 to 1279 AD, was a period of economic prosperity and cultural flourishing. It was reflected in the diversity and sophistication of its cuisine. Rice was the primary staple in the south, while wheat and millet were more common in the north, meaning noodles, made from wheat or rice, were already a popular food, enjoyed in various forms across the region. Vegetables, such as bok choy, Chinese cabbage, and various types of mushrooms were widely consumed. Soybeans were highly valued, providing not only tofu and soy sauce, but also soy milk and other substitutes. Meat consumption in China was relatively moderate, with pork being the most common, followed by chicken and duck. Beef was less common due to the importance of cattle for agriculture, but fish and seafood were integral to the diet, especially in coastal areas. 
In India, the diet was largely vegetarian for many, especially in regions where Hinduism and Jainism were prevalent. Rice, wheat, and barley were the staple grains, with lentils and legumes providing much of the protein. Spices like turmeric, cumin, coriander, and mustard seeds were essential to Indian cooking, creating the rich and flavorful dishes the region is known for. Now, swimming over to the Americas. 1,000 years ago, the diet was shaped by the agricultural practices of the indigenous peoples. The three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, were central to the diet across much of North and Central America. These crops were often grown together, providing a balanced diet and supporting sustainable agriculture. As the most important staple, corn would be used in various forms, like tortillas to tamales. The beans provided essential protein, while squash added vitamins and nutrients. In addition to these staples, indigenous peoples also cultivated a variety of other crops, including tomatoes, chilies, potatoes, and quinoa in the Andean regions. Hunting and fishing were also vital sources of food. In North America, games such as deer, bison, and smaller animals like rabbits were commonly hunted. Along the coasts, fish and shellfish were important parts of the diet. In Mesoamerica, the Maya and other civilizations had a diverse diet that included not only corn, beans, and squash, but also cacao, which was used to make a frothy chocolate drink, often flavored with chili peppers or vanilla. Swimming back over to Africa, the diet 1,000 years ago was diverse, showcasing the continent's different climates and cultures. In West Africa, grains like millet and sorghum were staples, used to make porridge, flatbreads, and other dishes. Yams and cassava were also important sources of carbohydrates. In the Nile Valley, wheat and barley were the primary grains, with vegetables like onions, garlic, and lettuce being widely consumed. The region's nearness to the Mediterranean allowed for trade in goods like olive oil, wine, and fish. Like most other places around the world at the time, meat was consumed more frequently in some areas than others, depending on the availability of the livestock. Cattle, sheep, and goats were common, with fish being an important part of the diet in marshy and coastal areas. In East Africa, the diet included bananas, plantains, and a variety of root vegetables. Later on, the introduction of new crops like rice and sugarcane through trade with Asia began to influence local cuisines. It was a world of diverse diets. A thousand years ago, the foods people ate were deeply connected to their environment, social structure, and cultural practices. While the diet of a peasant in medieval Europe differed vastly from that of a noble in the Middle East or a farmer in China, each was adapted to the resources and knowledge available at the time. The diversity of diets around the world 1,000 years ago laid the foundation for many of the cuisines we enjoy today reflecting the ingenuity and adaptability of human societies in the face of changing environments and challenges. Thank you for joining us on this delicious exploration. Stay tuned to Foodaloo for more culinary adventures, tips, and recipes by hitting the subscribe button and notification bell. Remember to comment what you'd like to see next and hit our like button. Until next time, bon appetit!